giving the benefit of the doubt, the daily active users, where revenue could be, what sort of numbers do you need to see to substantiate this sort of valuation? Yeah, you need to see a pretty steep trajectory in the, in the revenue curve. But really what it boils down to, uh, it, it boils down to three things. One is innovation on the camera. We really haven't seen that much innovation you know, since the actual uh, invention of the digital camera back in 1975, you know, aside from pixel quality. And I think as they push on the hardware side, like we're seeing with spectacles, and on the software side, I think you're going to be in a position where they can conceivably you know, be, take over the camera app on your phone. Now, that's the hook. The money, the holy grail, is going to come from these premium content deals that they do where they curate that and offer a completely differentiated mobile optimized experience where, you know, with all the competing platforms, it's plug and play, taking TV content, putting it into mobile. And, uh, and I think if you have a mobile optimized and, and differentiated one, you can really, uh, you can really uh, you know, separate yourself from the pack. And then lastly, it boils down to incentives. Because if they move more toward a TV type of affiliate model, what's going to happen is the financial incentives of the actual content producers is going to jibe much better with the experience and interests uh, that the end users uh, are looking to face. And when you have that kind of balance, I think you're going to be in a position where the ARPU trajectory, the revenue per user, is, is going to grow at a 60% clip, a CAGR, over the next couple of years. Corey, respond to that, if you will, as to, I mean, there's a lot of needs there to yeah. achieve. What, there are also a lot of concerns still, the cloud being that there's a slowdown in daily active user growth. And principally, I'm embarrassed for James for putting a price target like this he has in the stock. No, I'm just kidding. He, um, uh, it's, I, think, I think what's going on with this, with this company is that, that the, the question is how much revenue can the user support? And his, his ARPU argument is an interesting one, right? How many ads can they put on the site? How many on the, on the, on the app? How many ads have they not yet put on? Where is there a light possibility for more inventory? And then secondly, can they actually sell that, that kind of inventory? Or is Facebook and Google sucking up so much of the ad dollars uh, for, for online advertising that there really isn't room for a lot of other outlets out there? And I think that's an unknown question here. Um, and, and then, of course, the other big issue with this company is this head-to-head -head competition with Instagram. You know, when Instagram launched Instagram Stories, the, the dramatic growth that Snapchat had seen fell off a cliff. And, and cameras aren't going to make up for that uh, in the, at the end of the day, I don't think. Um, that fundamentally, they're going to have to sell ads on their platform. They're going to get their platform to grow. And it looks like Instagram Stories is preventing that from happening. And we'll know in a couple of quarters whether or not these guys can grow this business or not. Um, but right now, it looks like they're in trouble. James, respond to that in terms of the competition out there. Because can Snap create a new model, get content that perhaps hasn't been designed for other users before the way that they do mainly for the mobile phone and create something different and make money even at the not potentially the expense but at the same time as as Facebook and the like yeah I, I'm, I'm going to have to fundamentally disagree uh, what we like a bit of disagreement. how dare you <laughs> look what Instagram what, what Facebook is trying to do um, and, and they're doing really well at it is direct response, you know, trying to get the immediate conversion right then and there. But how do they do that? It's based off of hyperbolic content and, and a lot of things that are, um, uh, you know, what you can call clickbait. You know, to Fake try news. To, to try to get the, uh, the impression uh, uh, and so that it's a revenue sharing model. The more clicks you have, the more revenue the publisher and, and Facebook generate. Now, what Snapchat is trying to do is trying to replicate television where you have these these where it's about brand dollars and affinity and then you compare the Facebook and Snapchat dollars you know Facebook is about 30 percent of the digital uh, of the ad market that's that's for digital and, and direct response now the television dollars is 40 percent of the 600 billion dollar ad market and they haven't moved over to digital at all and why haven't they moved because the ad products and the experiences on mobile do not jibe with the marketing goals that the that these companies have because you're not building affinity uh, for Crest for Coca-Cola you know through a for through a click and I think if you can create TV like experiences with premium content uh, which Facebook is not willing to pay for and Snapchat is I th and, and in a curated way I think you're in a position where uh, those dollars start to come in a many, much more meaningful way and it's not fighting dollar for dollar with direct response it's winning new dollars that have been stuck in, in television.